Hi there! Welcome to the screencast on remote profiling using .trace. What we're going to see is how to attach the .trace profiler to a remote server. We can profile .NET applications on a local computer, but profiling remote applications is also supported. This may become handy when a performance problem only occurs on staging or production. Let's walk through the steps of collecting a performance snapshot from a remote application. First, we need some way for .trace to connect to the remote machine. This is done using the .trace remote agent which ships with .trace. You can find it in the bin remote folder of your local .trace installation. Copy the contents of this folder to the remote machine. In this demo, I'm using remote desktop and have shared my local disk to be able to copy paste these files to the remote server, but of course any other method will do, as long as the files get there. On the remote machine, start a remote agent. If the application is running as a different user, for example the system account, make sure to start it as an administrator. By default, the remote agent will listen on port 9000, which will have to allow through the firewall. If needed, the port number can be changed using command line switches, but make sure the port can be accessed over the network. Once the remote agent is started, we can connect to it using .trace on our local machine. When we open up .trace, we are presented with a welcome screen. We can start profiling using either the Profile button, which allows us to select the application type we want to profile, or by using the Attach to Process button. Let's use that one so we can see which processes we can profile on the remote server. We are now presented with a Profile Configuration dialog box. By default, it displays all .NET 4 processes running on the local machine. Since we want to profile a remote application, Let's click the Profile on Remote Computer link at the top. We now have to enter the URL to the remote agent. The URL will be similar to the example given in this dialog box. After clicking Add, .trace will connect to the remote agent over HTTP. It will fetch a list of all .NET 4 processes on the remote server to which we can attach. We can select a process we want to profile from this list. This can be IIS, as well as a Windows service or a self-hosted WCF service. Let's go with IIS, the process in which our web application is running. After clicking Run, .trace connects to the remote server through the remote agent. It also opens the .trace performance controller, in which we can get a performance snapshot from the remote machine, as well as detach or attach to the process being profiled. We can now use our application normally, while well, .trace gathers information. When we know we've touched a part of our code that is performing badly or that is of interest to us, we can click the Get Snapshot button. This will download profiler information from the remote agent and present it in a new instance of .trace. From .trace, we can now drill into the snapshot and find the performance issues we are hunting. We can use the threads tree and inspect all the threads within our application as well as the methods they have called. By the way, the native or optimized code entries you are seeing here are probably IIS being started. The call tree allows us to search based on method calls that occurred during performance profiling. The plain list displays all methods that have been called. We can click an entry and inspect the methods that have been called by them. The hotspots tab shows us the methods that trace thinks are causing performance issues by ordering methods based on the amount of time they consumed. In another screencast, we'll dive deeper into how we can find potential problems in our applications. In the meanwhile, I do hope you've enjoyed this screencast and you know how to do remote profiling using .trace. Till next time!